reading, being respectful. Ooh, that's a big one. I hope you're, that's got a heart on it because it's important in everyday life, not just on a Zoom call. To be respectful of others is to treat others the way you would like to be treated. So if you want to be treated nicely, then that's how you should treat others. On time, thank you for that. Bit staying muted, include your name or change your name and in the Zoom call and then stay in your spot. Keep your eyes on the screen where all the magic happens. All right, guys, here we go. Happy birthday to us, Julian and PJ, who you will meet very, very soon. He's getting ready, okay? So, happy birthday to our friends and <laughs> monkey clap for you. Now we're going to move on to our I, week. I have my oh, birthday. Oh, oh, oh God, God, wait, wait. Don't unmute and yell out in the middle of a lesson. Birthday boys, don't do that. Hold on, hold on. Okay. So, our weekly spotlight winners are. Joshua, Ava Marie, and Abdul. Good work, guys. Joshua for being an awesome Zoom promise keeper. He never unmutes and screams out anything in the middle. And, and I appreciate that. I really do. Ava Marie, amazingly detailed responses. I love your long sentences and details. No more one-word answers from you. I love it. Abdul, working hard, keeping up with his work, his pacing. Uh, what are we doing today, Ms. Cruz? We are going to make observations of living and non-living things so you i we can recognize that all plants and animals including us yeah we're humans have basic needs i know i have it when i can explain that all living organisms need what are the four things guys air water food and some space to grow okay wonderful we're going to learn about attributes at some point coming up. Um, I've mentioned that to a few friends. Here's a little reminder that we have no school tomorrow or Monday. Yeah, tomorrow I think is fair day. I figured out why we have tomorrow off. So I don't know if you're going to the Phil's, I mean, sorry, the Florida State Fair, give me a wave if you're going tomorrow. No, me either. <laughs> um, and uh, we also don't have school on Monday. So there will be no live lessons. Mm -hmm. Miss, Miss uh, Fox will not be having her live lesson on Monday. And there will be no DBAs at all tomorrow or Monday. We'll catch up with you on Tuesday. Okay, guys? Now, super science vocabulary. These are the words and terms that I wish you would use in your DBAs when you're discussing science, when you are responding. These are terms or vocabulary words that you should have learned in the lesson and that you should be using. Plants, roots, stems, leaves, flower, basic needs. Nutrients, grow, water, light. And then we have our bonus words. Organisms, oxygen, photosynthesis, convert. Oh, transport. Remember that one? I love that one. And habitat. Habitat or environment. All right. We're, are you guys ready to Nearpod? This Nearpod was taken from one of our teacher friends in first grade. And I kind of didn't really make too many changes. It's really good. So I hope you enjoy it. We're going to learn about how we mimic other living things or yeah, other living things so that we can um, survive and adapt to our environment. So we're going to learn a lot more about how we mimic. Mimic, mimic. Mimic means to do what? Who knows it? Who knows what mimic means? Raise your hand if you want to share what mimic means. Mimic, mimic. Addie, what does mimic mean? Copy somebody. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So before we start, we will have, we will copy each other. Are you guys ready? So let's see. Let me get you a big screen so I can see all your cute faces. And as you are logging into Nearpod, and I'm swinging over to go join you in Nearpod. I also put the code in the chat so you can find it there. Let me pull it up so we can see it. Okay, Christina, can you see on my screen? Do you see the, the uh, code? 
Do you see it on my screen? Larissa, I already got into the code. Great. Do you see it on the screen on my, do you see my screen? Yes, I think everybody does. Good. Yesterday we had trouble with the computer wanting to see it. So, all right, guys, let's do a mimic while we wait for our friends to join. Are you guys ready? <gasps> okay, here we go. <clears throat> Um, let me think. Purple. Yeah, you can unmute. Go ahead. Green. Green. Purple. Green. Purple. Green. Green. Orange. Orange. Green. Orange. Banana. 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 You have to say it just like me. Banana. Banana. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me think. Um, how about <clears throat> woof, 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 Yahoo, 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 Yahoo. Um, how about beep, 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 <laughs> All right, guys, say thank you very much and then mute. Go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You guys are awesome and mimicking. That was fun. All right, guys, let's see how we're doing. We're letting our last couple friends in, and our near pod code is D as in doggy A S 8 L. And let's see how many friends we have eight people in. <gasps> how exciting. So we're going to talk about mimicking, copycatting, and learning about what exactly it means in the natural environment and how we use mimicking and copying um, to adapt and survive in the world, in the environment we have. So we're going to learn how humans copy what plants and animals use. Did you ever know that you copied a plant? <laughs> I wonder what animals you copy. So we have to cap copy plants and animals uh, in order to meet our basic needs. So we talked about what a copycat is and we pretended to mimic and copycat each other, which was hilarious. Thank you for playing with, along with that. So let's move on to what we're going to talk about now. Um, I, I need your help in this. This, like I said, was made by a friend of mine. So I'm going to play her recording. If you cannot hear it, let me know. All right, you guys ready? Listen. Let's review some of our human cards, animal cards, and plant cards. Take a look at the first picture under human card, scuba gear. Whenever you go deep sea diving, humans have to use scuba gear, which consists of a tank of air to help them breathe, and goggles in a special swim suit to help them stay warm in the water. We use straws to help us drink our beverages. We use a raft to stay afloat when we are in water. We use an airplane to fly to different places around the world. And we use a shower head to help us take a shower and get cleaned up. Now look at the animal cards. We have a fish living in the fishbowl, an elephant, and a bird. Our plant cards, we have a lily pad and roots. Start thinking about how these human cards could be a matching pair with either an animal card or a plant card. Wait a minute. I see something right away that we use when we have like, I don't know, a smoothie or a milkshake or a soda. And I said that straws were just like, what part of the plant? Who wants a bonus shout out? <gasps> Who wants the bonus shout out? What? Root. Root. Yes, Root. yes. And this one's have a crumbs that are like a straw. Yeah, so we, if, if I were to match them up, if I were to slide those two together, they'd make a great pair. We use roots, I mean, silly Miss Cruz, we don't use roots to drink. We use straws to mimic what roots do. Isn't that interesting? So we are copying a plant. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is interesting. Okay. So now if you're looking around, 
Do you see, let's look at, uh, and you're going to do this on the next card, so, or the next slide, so pay attention to this. Let's look at the uh, airplane. Oh, ooh, the airplane. Ooh, we want to fly. I want to fly. What animal? Oh, go ahead, Johnny. What animal? What animal are we mimicking? Bird, bird. That's right. The wings of the bird. We, you know, many, many years ago, we stood there and looked up at the sky, watched those birds fly and said, what? I wish I could fly. Hmm. I wonder if I could figure out how they do it. And we did. Awesome. Let's try this one. The right brothers invented. Let's flight. let's try let's try one more, okay? Let's look at the raft. The raft is doing what on the water, Jaden? What's it doing? Uh, it's floating. Floating. Now take a minute to look over on the other side of the screen. Not the fish. He's not floating. He's swimming. But there is something there that's floating on the water. Can you see which one it is? Lily pad. That's right. When you go out on a boat, a raft, a blow up raft in your pool, you are mimicking a plant. Mm -hmm. Yep. Many years ago, we saw how lily pads can float and frogs can sit on them like little boats. <laughs> and we said, hmm, I wonder if I can do that. And we did. We mimicked plants. Now, let's try it. Let's see what we can do. You're going to match a human card to either a plant or an animal. Once you make the match, think about why they go together. All right. I'm just going to play her instructions, okay? Which pictures make a pair? Number one. Match a human card with either a plant or animal card. Number two, once you make a match, think about why those cards go together. Then when you're ready to share, use this sentence starter to help you. The picture of the blank goes with the picture of the blank because blank. All right. So can't see your work. Let's see if I can see. So they're just asking you to slide the pictures next to each other. And we did the straws and the roots. That's a good match. We did the airplane and the bird. We copied birds to make airplane wings. Yeah. And what was the other one? We did lily pads and rafts or boats. What's another one? Who wants to share? Larissa. Tell me about another pair that you made. I made a pair with the elephant. Elephant? And what can he spray? Water. They put and their what? nose on water and then they just spray it on themselves. So we saw an elephant spray water and we wanted to mimic him. What did we make to mimic the elephant spray. Uh, the shower head. Very good. Very good. That's awesome. <laughs> Every time you take a shower, pretend there's an elephant spraying water on your head. <gasps> Siddharth, you have I'm another scared. one? <laughs> Siddharth, you have another one? Oop, un unmute, unmute. Okay, go ahead. Um, you're at... If you want to ask your um, uh, mimicking a lily pad, because the lily pad um, floats on water. That's right. That's no, excellent. No, no. Thank you for sharing that. Did anybody, thank you, honey. Did anybody figure out the scuba gear one? Ooh, Jules, go ahead, Jules. You haven't had a chance to tell me. A, a scuba, a scuba. Here goes with the fish. That's the, the, right. The, the. <laughs> what, why would we mimic a fish, Julian? What, what, why in the world would we do that? So we can swim. Where? In underwater. Oh, excellent. A long time ago. I'm, a, I'm my own marine biologist. Yes, you here. are. <laughs> a long time ago, we looked under the water and said, 
hey, we want to be able to swim underwater. How can we do that? We can't breathe under there and we had to figure it out. We saw how fish could and we had to mimic them and we designed a way to do that. All right, guys, let's move it's on. Great. Fish tank. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, I, I, I. All right, here we go. We're going to watch a quick movie. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, teach plays, here we go. I think there's like three questions. This is going to discuss a little bit more all about mimicking and copying. It's time to get moving with PBS Kids. What do you know about playing Simon Says? Oh. Everything. Write it down, please. <gasps> Jules. I know it's your birthday, but if you unmute again, you can't meet my snake. Oops. <laughs> Happy birthday, though. But shh, 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 shh. Okay, so the question is, what do you already know about playing Simon Says? I think you know this. A lot. Everything. What do you mean everything and a lot? What do kids have to do when they play Simon Says? What's this lesson all about? Oh, what do you think, Ava Marie? What do you think Simon Says is? Olmo, do you know? Oh, Addie. Yes, and Johnny, I agree. Okay, so I'm going to say what Addie said. You're copying. Oh, that's what that is. You're being a copycat. Simon says, do this. So you do it. Simon says, do that. So you do that. Johnny says, as Simon says to sit down, you need to sit down. Someone says, get up. Don't get up. <laughs> because he didn't say. Copycat. Excuse me. <clears throat> All right, guys, let's move on. So when we play the game, um, we're actually copying what we are told to do. What happened to my video? This closed. I can get. All right, let's keep going. Hi, everyone. Dot here. Today, Dell and Deer are joining us, and we're going to change things up a little. Ready, guys? Simon says, wave your arms in the air like this. That's it. Swing them to the left, right, left, right. You've got it. Simon says, your turn, Del. Are you riding a horse? Simon says, ride your horse. Okay. Which of the following is a way to show that you are riding a horse? Answers. A, moving your arms up and down. B, sitting on the floor. C, walking backwards. D, I don't know. Uh, here come the answers. Oh, yeah, I think you're right. Do horses walk backwards? I think so. Maybe sometimes. Uh, we're doing charades or Simon says you would move your arms up and down like this <laughs> that's right all right let's keep going let's see what else they're gonna have us do hang on tight and ride your horse it that's it <laughs> stay on the horse trail and ride Ooh. Simon oh. says, flap your wings like a bird. And bend those knees, too. That's right. That's it. Woo, that was fun. You were great, guys. Thanks. See you next time, everyone. What is one other animal you could demonstrate during Simon Says? <gasps> uh, he's long. He has no legs. We might meet her. We might meet her at the end. Oh, 
or you could bring in animals, maybe a pet that you have, wild animal. What's one that you would mimic, copy, and demonstrate during a sign that says, your mom? <laughs> okay, is mom an animal? I guess she is. A snake. About, say a snake. Johnny says, wiggle your body left and right. All right, Johnny. <laughs> you know, shark. Ooh, a shark. How about a fish? Make a fish face. That's right. Uh, ooh, sharks. Well, that's scary. What Christina said. Christina, what's your set? Unmute, what is your set? Are you kidding me? But how do I get back in the near pod because Oh um, no, you you can um I'll give you the code. You can go out and come back in. Do you want the code? Yeah, but I don't know how to do that because now I'm more when I when I open the computer and yeah. then like I will see like this spot here. But I can see the rest of it. Mine says horse. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. I love horses. All right, my mom. I, I want to even ride on one. <laughs> I know, me too. Let's move on to what are we doing here? Fill in the blanks. Um, we're going to skip this part, okay? This is just vocabulary. Can you do this? Um, actually, let me read you the answers to the four. But you can do this on your own when you practice the Nearpod. It goes like this. Birds have wings that allow them to, you can unmute and tell me, what is it? Fly. Fly. And, but humans cannot do this without a plant. Plane. That's mm. right. Elephants have trunks. Trunk. Trunks. That allow them to spray water. But humans cannot do this without a sh shower. Shower. Fish have get, get, gills. gills that allow them to breathe underwater, but humans cannot do this without. Scuba, scuba dive. Lily pads have flat, flat float bottoms. That's right. That allow them to float. But humans cannot do this without a raft. Raft. Roots have many small tubes. 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 That's what they are to allow them to suck up water. But humans cannot do this without a straw. Awesome. Okay, guys. Good work. We're so close to the end. Are you guys ready? We're going to do a quick little activity. My son's getting the snake ready, so give about five minutes, okay? So listen. What are some ways that penguins, polar bears, and whales stay warm? Penguins. We know a polar bear looks so cuddly, doesn't he? What does he have on his body that keeps him warm? Say it. Ah, yeah. Blubber, blubber. That's right. What about penguins? What do they have on their bodies to keep them warm? Feather. Blubber. Beautiful. Feather. Okay, here we go. Let's see. guys, we're just cooling off here reading about some cool polar animals. But have you ever wondered how animals can live in super cold places all the time? Animals like beluga whales, harp seals, emperor penguins, and polar bears. They certainly don't wear sweaters, but they're perfectly comfortable where they live. These animals are warm-blooded. That means their bodies stay the same temperature on the inside, no matter how hot or cold it is outside. Humans are warm-blooded too, and so are rats, but not squeaks. If you've ever had your temperature taken, then you know how the doctor uses a thermometer to take the temperature of your body inside. It's usually right around 37 degrees Celsius. Well, whales that live in cold waters need to have the same internal temperature as warm-blooded animals in any other part of the world, from about 35 to 42 degrees Celsius. But the cold water means they can lose heat really fast, and whales can't snuggle up into a ball, find shelter, or put on an extra sweater like we can. So how do whales stay warm? Blubber, and not just whales. Seals and walruses have it too. 
Blubber is a really thick layer of fat between an animal's skin and its muscles. Whales are almost totally covered in it, except for their fins, their flippers, and their flukes, also known as the whale's tails. And blubber is really special. It's not like the fat on humans and other animals. First of all, blubber is a lot thicker than fat. In dolphins, it can be just a few centimeters thick. But some kinds of whales, known as bowhead whales, can have a layer of blubber that's more than 30 centimeters thick. Whoa, that's a whole lot of blub. Blubber also feels different. It's more firm and springy than other fat. Finally, blubber is different because it just serves a different purpose than other fat. For people, fat is a way to store extra energy that we get from food. But for whales and walruses, blubber is like putting on a super thick winter coat. It traps their body heat inside their bodies and keeps it from spreading out into the cold water. With their special blubbery coat, whales can stay perfectly cozy in water that's two degrees below zero. That's below freezing. Okay, blubber is awesome, but what about other animals that live in cold climates that don't have blubber? What about polar bears? Polar bears have fat that's pretty similar to human fat, so it's not that useful for helping them stay warm. Instead, polar bears have two kinds of fur, a super thick inner layer and an oily outside layer called guard hair. The inner layer of fur traps their body heat as it leaves their skin, and the longer guard hair keeps the inside layer totally dry when they swim in the water. Together, these special fur layers keep the polar bear nice and warm. But this next animal doesn't have blubber or fur. Emperor penguins have a different cool trick to stay warm. They use each other. During the coldest months in Antarctica, penguins huddle together to trap warm air between their bodies. Instead of standing alone and being totally exposed to the cold wind, the penguins squish together so they're surrounded by the body heat of other penguins. Of course, it's not so nice for the penguins on the outside of the circle, but the huddle is always moving. The cold penguins on the outside get to move to the center, while the warm penguins in the middle move out to take their turn on the edge. Way to share, penguins. Animals. That was awesome. We got to learn about how people, or I'm sorry, animals adapt and, and their bodies change in order to help them survive. Hey, you're going to help me survive. Real quick, this is the last thing we're going to do. Mrs. Cruz needs a jacket. She's going hiking in North Carolina, and all the jackets she has are too thin, and she would freeze. Do you think you can design a jacket using materials on the next slide that will keep me nice and warm while I go hiking? Here we go. I want you to design the jacket using up to three different materials and think of the best way to mimic or copy the way an animal stays warm using materials. Explain why your design would be the best in keeping me warm. I'm going to read the five materials you have to choose from. Hold on, Ava. I'm almost ready. Feathers, butter, cotton balls, felt, and a chamois, which is like a, which is like a towel, a really absorbent towel. When you pour okay, water on I it, think it's crash hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> so on the next slide, you're going to design it. Are you ready? Okay. Drag the objects you would use to design my jacket. You may also pick other items if you're not listed, if that are not listed here. If you think of anything else, if there's time. I don't think we have time because we're ready for the snake in just a minute, but you may draw your design. Yes, that's a picture of my friend, Miss Candemil. And go ahead and drag in your, <laughs> your materials that you would use to keep me warm. I'm cold. Are you able to do it? Is it working, Sadar? Drag the objects you would use to design my jacket. You may also pick other items not listed here to design your jacket. If there is time, you may draw your design. Drag the you can always draw it later. Hi, Christina. What's up, honey? It's not. Oh. It was something about the. You got it. Green. Activity, we got to think. Okay, of. okay, you're welcome. <laughs> you solved it yourself. <laughs> All right, loves. So, you have about 10 seconds left, maybe 15, to design the jacket. Christian, what'd you choose? Did you choose feathers for me? Cotton balls? What'd you pick? I wonder what almost jacket for me looks like. What about, what about Josh? Jaden, what'd you pick? 
and cotton ball and belt and chamois. Oh, wow. I wonder why you picked cotton. Is it a nice, warm, fluffy material? Mm -hmm. oh, that would keep me warm. You know where I found a lot of cotton? In my blankets and my pillows. Anybody pick feathers for me? You did? You did? I did. Why'd you pick feathers? Why, Jules? Because feathers are like penguin feathers. Oh. It keeps you nice and warm and comfy. And I choose right. lots of red feathers yeah. and white cotton balls and blue felt. That's right. Some of those feathers have a oily coating. It will, the water will come right off of it. All right, my loves. Be loud and clear as you count and report. Okay? So we got to get to 100. It's oh, somebody's unmuted. I can hear so, going on. We got 100 chart right. There we go. All right. Now, <clears throat> it's time to meet our friend. Is there anybody here? Who does not want to meet our snake. You may log off now if you do not want, wish to see or if you don't, you know, somebody in your family does not want to meet a snake. That's totally fine, but you need to log off then. I want you to be quiet and respectful. Those that unmute and yell out when my son is talking about the snake, we will have to say bye-bye, okay? Stay muted until it's time for questions. And don't forget to say thank you and happy birthday to my son, PJ. His birthday's tomorrow, like, like Julian's was yesterday. And then we're going to log off, and I'll see you next week. Okay? All right, so hang tight. Let's meet uh, my son, PJ, and our snake out here. Hold on. I have a snake. Can you see? Let me see. Hold on. Speaker. Addy, can you hear him? Is it blurry? Yes. Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. So I can get her head in there. Mm -hmm. So this is Gaia. This is my pet boa constrictor. I'm trying to get a good view for you guys. They call them red tailed boas because, as you can see, they have beautiful red tails. This one's about four years old. I'd say it's about five feet long. And it's a very nice snake. Never bitten or hissed or anything. So this is my favorite pet here. Struggling to get it all on camera, but say hi. Maybe she can hear you. All right. Do you guys have any questions? You can raise your hand. And then we can call on you, okay? Difficult for me to unmute. I know, right? How about uh, Julian? Yep. Unmute and ask one at a time, okay? Does that snake rattle? No, this is not a rattlesnake. As a matter of fact, this is this snake is not poisonous or venomous at all. This is a this is a boa. Doesn't really make any noises at all. Does that answer your question, Lynn? Yes. Very cool, very cool. Thank you for your question. How about Larissa? Does the snake bite? Well, anything that has a mouth can bite. So a dog, a cat, anything. Um, but will the snake bite is a better question. And the answer is no, this snake will not bite. This is one of the few very nice snakes that I found in my life, luckily for me. There you go. Um, I've never had any problems with this snake, and I've had it for years. And she's never even hissed at me before. This is a very nice snake. Not all snakes are like that. Some snakes will bite you. So you just have to know the animal. And I know this animal, so no worries there. Does that answer? That my question. There you go, Larissa. How's about Mr. Jaden? What does snakes eat? 
So snakes typically eat little animals. So a lot of different snakes have different ways of doing it. Some snakes are poisonous and will eat their animals that way, like little mice or rats or whatever they can find in the wild. Um, but this snake here eats feeder rats, stuff that they sell at the reptile store. It's not like this animal has to go around attacking live animals to eat. So I, I buy stuff at the pet store for her. And she eats it just fine. She's a great eater. Does that answer your question, Jaden? Mm -hmm. Awesome, buddy. Thank you for the question. Mm -hmm. Who else? How about Ava? How big can it get? Oh, what a wonderful question. So boa constrictors, these snakes are some of the biggest snakes in the world. Um, this is a little one. And I don't know how big this one will get. There's really no way to tell. What I do know is that certain boas have gotten up to about 12 feet long, which is ridiculous. They end up weighing about um, 80 pounds. But this snake right here is a tiny one. I don't know why. I think it's just a part of the way that this snake was maybe bred or something. But this snake right here weighs about three and a half pounds. It's a little teeny tiny thing, only five feet. Does that answer your question, Ava? Yeah. One more thing, the female snakes get bigger than the boys. How about, who else has a question? Um, I'm gonna go with this person, Adeline. She's had her hand up for a million years. <laughs> what, what, what do you keep it in? So I keep this snake right here in a 40 gallon glass tank. She's actually getting ready to make a tank upgrade to a bigger one. Um, I basically keep her in a, in a fish tank that has no water in it and it has, uh, it's set up for a snake. So there's paper towels on the bottom so that when she poops, it's easy to clean. And um, she has a hide that she likes to sleep in. And there's a heat lamp on top that keeps her nice and toasty. Okay. So, does that answer your question? Mm-hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy birthday. Thank you, Adeline. I appreciate that. Uh, how's about, um, how about Joshua? I'm going to try to get to all of you. He looks cool. Yeah. For real. And uh, I'm not really sure why they have a red tail. I don't know. I don't think anybody knows. Oh. She just shed. Tell them about how she just shed. Oh, yeah. Sometimes, uh, I th I'd say about once a month, my snake will kind of have a like a, bl like a bluish or a silvery sort of color. And her eyes will turn blue. I'm trying to get the head in the camera. She's not working <laughs> with me. Her eyes will turn blue. And then she'll shed. And after she sheds, she's beautiful. What are you my saying? about? Red is your favorite color or blue? Blue. Nice. That's a good, that's a good choice, Joshua. So uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. Awesome, man. Thanks for, thanks for checking in. How's about we go to Siddharth? Uh, if we let the snake in the wild, isn't it supposed to constrict? Yes, sir. It's a boa constrictor. And that is what they do in the wild. And um, this snake here is so comfortable with its life that it doesn't even really constrict. Uh, it has no need to. Um, that's probably why the snake is so friendly. Because, well, this is not a wild snake anymore. It is a, it is a house snake. I like to say that she's kind of like a legless cat. So if that gives you an idea as to how friendly the snake is, then that's the ask, truth of it. Ask Siddharth if he wants to tell people what constrict means. So Siddharth, why don't you go ahead and unmute yourself and tell everybody what constrict means. Uh, like a, an animal uh, wraps itself around another animal and holds it. Then the animal won't breathe and then it will die. Oh man, isn't that kind of brutal? <laughs> it's a little brutal, isn't it? It's not the worst way to go out there though. I mean, that's for sure. <laughs> Well, very cool. That was an excellent um, 
That was an excellent way to describe that. Thank you, Siddharth. That was awesome. All right, let's see. How about Christina? How do snakes know don't don't fall even if they're like anywhere or on something because they don't even fall. So um oh. uh, snakes, oh, yeah, snakes don't climb on people in the wild. Uh, they climb on trees or branches or rocks, and those things are really sturdy and stable. And the snakes get a sense of trust over what they're climbing. Um, me, I have to literally act like a tree when I'm holding the snake. I have to be stable and sturdy so that she trusts me. As a matter of fact, I have handed my snake to people who she didn't trust. And um, it was a mistake. Uh, because they don't know how to hold her. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know how to hold her, she kind of freaks out a little bit. And if she freaks out, she will poop on you. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, my snake does not bite. Instead, she will, um, she'll make a mess if she doesn't like you. Let's put it that way. <laughs> I'm hoping she doesn't do that to me right now. She's a, she's a little bit of a mood today because she's getting ready to eat tomorrow. So hopefully you're nice to me, right, Gaia? Uh, thank you, Christina. Does that answer your question? Yes. We got another wild Johnny, animal back Johnny there. Up there on the top. Ooh, is there Johnny Bean? Yes. Um, the snake it has like those colors because it so then it could blend in. Also, does it fart? Uh, two excellent questions. Uh, I like the way your brain works. So. Uh, yes, the colors of the snake help it blend in, except for the tail. The tail is bright red. Um, some people think that it's to warn predators. They stay away from me. I've got a big scary tail and I will use it. Um, or it could be to lure in the prey to make them, you know, say, hey, look at that beautiful thing. I'm going to go smell. And then suddenly they're being squeezed by a snake. So the other, the other, the answer to the other question, do snakes fart? Not really. Snakes don't really fart. Um, not like uh, mammals do. They don't make a, they don't do that. Um, if they do, it's, it's silent but deadly. So <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> hey, Johnny, you know what you brought up? You brought up about camouflage and that fits into our, our lesson about mimicking, right? So uh, when we want to hide from others, we take uh, a lesson from snakes and other animals that they can uh, blend into their environment. And so that's what we do. We get camouflage uh, colors on our clothes so we can blend in, right? Yeah. So we like mimic. You get, like you get a completely solid outfit and then you just hide on your walls and like, boom, <laughs> hide and see eating, man. Boom, no one's going to find you. That's why I got to keep this snake in the tank because if she gets out, I got to go looking. She's a good hider, so I'm, a, I'm not a good seeker. Uh, does that answer your questions? Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to go with Christian. He's at the bottom Happy of the birthday. screen. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. But yeah, I'm going to go with Mr. Christian. He's been at the bottom of my screen, raising his hand for about a billion years now. What's your question, buddy? Where does he come from? Uh, this snake comes from, hold on, I don't know if you know this, but it comes from South America, the, the top of South America. Do you know where that's at? Uh, kind of? Amazon Rainforest? Yeah, pretty much. If, if you know where Florida is, it is down. And then there's an ocean, and then under that ocean, there's a big old continent called South America. And right at the top of that ocean, right near the beach, there's a jungle. And this snake comes from that jungle. Um, that jungle is called Guyana. It's a beautiful place, although a dangerous place. So it almost, It's almost like Guyana. Yeah, yeah, almost. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Awesome question. Thank you for the question. Anybody else? If, if you... Oh, there's Almo at the bottom. Is that Almo? Oh, there he is. Almo, what's your question, buddy? Um, my question is 
like mm -hmm. yeah how do like snakes like <sighs> rattle did that snake rattle no nah, this snake is not a rattling snake um but some snakes do have a rattle at the end of their tails or even if some snakes don't have a rattle at the end of their tails if you make them mad enough their tail will shake side to side a little bit um that's just to let you know hey back off you're making me mad i don't want to have to bite you that kind of thing they use it as a warning so that's why snakes rattle is the, the reason as to how they do it well they just kind of shake their tails around and the rattlesnakes well i don't i don't have a rattlesnake but rattlesnakes actually have a piece at the end of their tail that makes noise so it's kind of crazy the does that answer your question Omo? yeah has uh has everyone had a chance to ask one question i think so if you have extra questions you can text them to me or send them to me and I'll ask him and, and we'll write up the answers. Okay, guys, he has to go to work. So he's going to go teach Taekwondo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's him. Yes, ma'am. If you guys want to, if you guys want to join my class, I mean, all you got to do is, you know, go up to your parents and say, hey, you should check out sidekicks, yeah. family martial arts. So you can do flying sidekicks. <laughs> yeah, and I'll teach you how to do a flying sidekick. Yeah. I wonder what animal that is mimicking. And we can talk about random animals. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it was wonderful, guys. Say thank you and happy birthday. Thank you and happy birthday. Thank you, thank you and happy birthday. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. Happy birthday. Bye, happy guys. Birthday. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.